Hello. I haven't made a post in a little bit. I've been working on some other things, and one of them happens to be an ASMR related project that you will see very soon. But there are also other things. So, as a simple video, I would like to share with you some poetry that is original to me, poetry that I have written. Uh, most of this is pretty old, and to quantify it more, maybe a few years old. Yeah, actually, what is it, 2017 now? So most of this is within six years. I don't think I have anything in this folder that's older than s from 2011. But I started writing poetry in around August of 2011, and we're not there yet, so. Okay, um. I don't know which ones I'll read. Just the ones I like, I guess. And I like all of them for their, what they are, but certain ones I feel are a little more polished, shall we say. This was an interesting one. This is called 1,000 Years. A match was made in heaven, and in heaven lit a flame. A love between two partners, who you'd swear were both the same. Their love was so iconic, recognizable on sight. Embraces shared between their eyes as hearts had taken flight. The story took a sudden twist when lips of theirs did meet. Time began to twitch around, jealous of romantic feet. A thousand years then passed them by without concern of weight. The world had changed entirely, their lives of past now late. No older were their bodies, but all they knew was gone. They found themselves together, but a brand new world was drawn. Without a soul to greet them and unsure of what to do, a tender kiss was shared once more to see if it was true. Another thousand years flew by, concerning both the two. Whatever should they do from here, when time was all they knew? The man surveyed their setting, studied close what was around. Then, turning in, discovered no solution to be found. He took his partner by the hand, concern detailed her face. Smiling, he sealed their fate, removed concern with grace. Their embrace was eternal, their passion's timeless flame, two lovers caught in love lock, seeking out the final frame. Okay, moving on, what else we got? Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't write the first part of that poem down, but I wrote the second one down, the second part. Uh, the first part I have memorized though, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I told you that. This one is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I could explain it, but it'll ruin the kind of the theme. I'm not going to give it a title on this one because it's, it's kind of titled, but I don't like it, so I don't care. I mean, I've always had trouble with rhyming, ever since I was younger, I guess. Whenever poems would come up in school, I would do terrible, really bad. 
It's not even timing that's difficult. I hear how it needs to time out. You'd think that these things would be simple, but apparently they aren't for me. So, one day while walking, I stumble. I trip and fall into the ground. I don't quite know how it had happened, but it hurt. I was distracted by that. But the colors around me seemed brighter, more vivid, and beaming with life. My surroundings were no longer normal, so I must have hit my head pretty hard. Before me approached a small creature, a bit hairy, but trimmed with good care. He raised an eyebrow to me on the ground. I hoped he wasn't attracted to me. Good day, sir, and how may I help you? We don't get much visitors here. It could be the air or the clothes that we wear, but all of them sure disappear. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm not sure where here is. I'm definitely no longer home. This world seems so strange to a human. How do I get back? Human, you say? How delightful! You folk make the most scrumptious pies. A rare breed you are here among us. Remaining here might be unwise. I've no interest in staying wherever I am. I'm late for a meeting back home. Perhaps you could guide me if you'd be so kind. I'd really appreciate it, man. Yes, I can guide you. Don't worry, my friend. We'll go to a universe event. But do keep in mind, for the vent here to send, you'll have to correct your accent. Accent? What accent are you speaking of? My English is fine, by all means. I've no problems with speech and can hear just as well, so really I should be fine, right? No, you must stop. You need practice right now. This accent is not of the world. What you need to change is your rhyming exchange. It's the rhyming to which I preferred. You want me to rhyme everything that I say? That's ridiculous, crazy at best. I'm so bad at rhyming, it's destined to fail because I don't have enough zest. Well, there is a start. Don't give up just yet. In time you'll catch on, I'm quite sure. Just maintain the rhymes for just enough time. It's easy, if you can endure. I'm not used to rhyming past three-letter words, so excuse all my childish lingo. Oh, shoot, I forgot to consider my rhyme. I'm as good as an orange flamingo? We walked for a ways, and we couldn't find haze. We walked down the roads, single file. My friend didn't like all my terrible rhymes. For him, a few yards was a mile. We're now nearly there. No more time to prepare. Are you ready to give it a go? Just project your voice with the rhyme of your choice and hope that your true wish did show. Hello there, dear portal I see up above. I'm sick of this land that I roam. Please take me from here in this land. I'm a deer. I really just want to go home. I floated then up to the sky with a light surrounding me, filling with glow. I wasn't sure now what was happening to me, but I was creeped out, that I know. Goodbye, friend, and good luck in your world. It's good you are leaving, no doubt. Come back when you want to bake me a treat. But for now, take your rhymes and get out. That was the last I saw of the man. I woke on the sidewalk up top. I wish I was able to speak normal again, but the rhyming I can't freaking stop. <laughs> Very silly poem. Um, what's this one? No, that's too strange for you guys. I wrote a lot of poetry about strange, uh, not strange, maybe just abstract ideas and spiritual concepts and whatever else, whatever other nonsense I could dream up in the days. What's this? <laughs> no, I don't think I finished that one. I hope that's not too teasy. There's, there's almost 50 items in this folder, so 
I um, can't read all of them. Nor would you want me to, honestly. A lot of these just aren't that good. And I'm not being humble, I'm just... I think when you make art, especially as you're just beginning, a lot of the stuff you come up with just isn't your best work. And that's fine. I want to read this one because this is an important one to me. I don't think other people like it as much as I do, but it's meaningful to me, so that's why I want to share it. I can still remember the exact moment I wrote this. I don't, I don't know the date, but I know where I was living. I know what was going on in my life at the time. I know how I was feeling. And I can remember the sensations when I wrote this. Um, I was a little hungover, to be completely honest with you. Um, and not from alcohol. But that's all I'm going to say. This was in 2012. So going on six years. But I had this... I didn't feel that bad. But I just felt kind of groggy and yucky and bleh. Is how anyone might from some sort of hangover. But then... In the midst of this, I had this very striking, poignant clarity that dawned in my head. And that's what this poem is about. And I thought it was such an interesting moment. I'm going to share it now. I titled it Floating. My thoughts are very disorganized, disheveled, scattered, strewn across the ever so swiftly changing climate of the wasteland of my head. Plip, plop, they fall like raindrops, materializing from nothing and only entertaining my existence through their short descent. But some are much larger, oceans falling just as fast as rain, but no harsher, and I soon find myself swimming in the torrents of conversations, mostly me. It's easy to be swept up in the tides of emotion, but it's much harder to grab the fleeting shore, the land that is always there, but very elusive, which we hide from ourselves. That is, until we wash ashore, a bedraggled creature, unkempt and insatiable, searching out happiness in a land we will never find it. The Isle of Existence is as much a hell as it is a paradise, to every man the freedom to make what he will. But this time, this time is different. It's much quieter now, as I quiet the stillness of my discontent. I feel clear, lightheaded, not in the sense that most people will read that word, not an illness or sign of anything negative in nature, but rather exactly what it says. My head is filled with light. This light permeates, illuminates all of my head with no focal point, bringing brilliance with it, making a sign assure of myself. I've never been this beautiful, but at the same time knowing that I've always been this beautiful, and just never took the time to look. There's places of me old and worn, and others entirely unexplored, with an alluring aura beckoning to me, saying, see with your own two eyes the very things you have known for an eternity building, ever constructing, are the questions forming in me. But there's no sense of urgency, as usual, no feelings of 
need for the answers. It's this freedom that unlocks in me the desire to explore, to begin, knowing that I will end up right where I need to be with all of these questions answered. I already know them. I have mixed feelings about free verse poetry. I like it because it lets me focus on different things than rhyme-based poetry, but it's there's a certain, uh, I don't know, a certain feeling that you can get with rhymes that you just can't achieve with free, ba free verse. <laughs> and... I like that sometimes. So different different things for different ideas or expressions. What else we got? Here's another simple one. This one is rhyme based. And you can see sort of just the, I keep wanting to say the word juvenility. Is that a word? This one is called In My Hands. I said that with probably bad inflection. How about In My Hands? I live the life that's in my hands and inhale as my world expands. With every count of passing breath, my life remains awaiting death. To use the time, I spy and seek adventures of sublime unique. I wait and listen, both to hear the inner voice with which I steer. I follow blindly its advice, regardless of the prize or price. I trust completely where I go. In me I trust, in trust I flow. My path so far was never wrong. It knew the turns and tricks along. Sometimes it seemed about to fail, and more than once I chose to bail. Much pain ensued, as it would be, I fought the stream that harbored me. But once I learned that fact once more, I gave up struggles for the shore. I turned my mind and fears inside, relaxed as I enjoyed the ride. I knew somewhere that this was true, and smiling saw the daylight through. I do not argue, will not settle, for less than joy or finest fettle. A top-notch life is meant to be for open eyes that truly see. What I can see and start to learn alights my passion's brightest burn, and where to go is never shown. I've made a friend out of unknown. I live the life that's in my hands, and lead it with my own demands. For joy is never out of reach to those who can forget the beach. Alrighty, doing good. What's this one? Mm. Pass on that one for now. I wrote this one Actually, uh, never mind. I was gonna say, is that the phone? <laughs> I'm actually kind of embarrassed that we have a landline in this house. No one has a landline anymore. <laughs> Except us and other people. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Okay, I was going to say that I wrote this for a contest at work, but I don't think that's true. I submitted it for a contest at work, and I didn't win. It's a poetry contest. But I... I don't know. I didn't care that much. I, I liked the, the girl who won the contest. Or wait, did she win? I don't know. 
through reading the entries, I made a friend because I liked her poem and I emailed her and I, I don't know, just started chatting with her. I digress. This one is called Mirrored. And in the mirror, I see a man whose face is kind enough to be a smiling one reflecting back, although this person isn't me. It matters not from whence he comes, from either side appears the same. And circling, I study fast, this stranger in the glossy frame. His eyes beget familiar glow, a signpost that would mark a trail to secrets held behind that mask for passers-by to hope unveil. And though I'm never able to discern the man that meets my gaze, our meetings always end the same. We nod and go our separate ways. I like that one. It was meant to express this this feeling that I would get sometimes when I would look at my reflection in the mirror and be like that's that's not me. Who's that person? I don't know. It's it's kind of a surreal experience to feel that. Ugh. Not saying it happens every time. I heard the idea once that the the person that you see in a mirror is a version of you in a parallel universe and it, it's in this universe it's totally backwards from you and everything is exactly the same like everything in the timeline all of history and everything that you'll ever do or be or think is the same only backwards and I thought that was interesting it's fun to conceptualize this other person on the other side of this mirror who is an autonomous entity just like you and they're thinking the same thoughts like about you like oh, I wonder if that person in the mirror is really there really just their own thing and then you wonder when they're they're gonna break the reality alignment or whatever reality integrity and do something that you didn't do. How startling would that be, right? <laughs> That's an amusing thought. A lot of these poems, too, are me kind of writing about things that I'm thinking about. Um, or working through in my own psychology. If you, It sounds a little too... Uh, too serious when I say it like that but just if I'm exploring ideas or exploring parts of myself so a lot of them won't be relevant or interesting to you guys anyway hmm what is this one? oh <laughs> I guess I will leave you with a bit of an angsty one that I wrote and I'm not going to explain it <laughs> um, but I will read it this one is called silent if only you could hear the things that never leave my mouth the things I hold withdrawn to keep the conversation north from south. I know the words that I could say which you would never hear. That's why I don't waste time and send them to their death by ear. I love your incongruencies. They make up who you are. I just don't see the usefulness in opening your scars. When you watch my silenced eyes, you think of me as dead. You're yet to understand me that some thoughts are better left unsaid. 